Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Brad Power with Municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I hope you're all safe and sound in your, uh, your homes and, uh, and doing your part to uh, flatten the curve of, of COVID-19. At m &L, uh, we've undertaken a, a new initiative to, um, uh, to provide some educational opportunities and product demonstrations that, uh, that may help you through your response to, uh, to COVID-19 and the, and the pandemic. A uh, couple of housekeeping items before we get underway. Um, please use the chat function uh, of your app or web uh, setup uh, if you have any questions. Um, we will uh, have a short Q&A at the, the end of the presentation. Um, you can rearrange how you see your screen in the top right corner and of course on the app uh, icons on the bottom part of your screen. So when uh, the presentation is shared, you can focus on that or you can uh, see the video. So I encourage you to play around with those options to, uh, to see which one suits your needs. Um, if you're uh, uh, interested in pursuing um, uh, uh, eScribe uh, after the demonstration, uh, by all means, please uh, reach out to uh, Blair or Paul, who you'll, uh, you'll meet now shortly. Um, you'll actually um, receive a follow-up email from us with their website and, uh, and some contact information and a, a copy of the presentation. Uh, we're very interested in your opinion. Uh, after you, uh, you watch this webinar, uh, we'd, uh, we will be sending out a survey over email, so we'd appreciate if you completed that. It's very short, uh, won't take you very long. Um, MNL Advantage, which is the membership services side of Municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador, has all kinds of new stuff planned moving forward, um, including more educational webinars. Uh, check your email. A new uh, update just went out a few minutes ago. Um, and uh, we'll be sharing it all with you uh, over the days and weeks ahead. So before, um, before I delay any longer, I'm going to um, introduce uh, Blair McDonald. Blair is the uh, Territory Sales Manager for eScribe. Blair will be joined by uh, co-founder and vice president, uh, Paul Mackin, um, with eScribe as well. Uh, Paul will be logging in any moment, so you'll see him on the screen shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, um, ground rules, pose your questions in the chat function. Uh, if, you, uh, if you need anything, you can send a message directly to me. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy, and uh, we'll see you when uh, the presentation concludes. So Blair, uh, over to you, sir. Thanks, Brad. Uh, pleasure to be with everybody today, and we really appreciate everybody carving out some time to join us uh, this afternoon. Uh, obviously, we're, we're living in some challenging times, and um, sometimes challenging times force us to uh, come up with innovative, innovative ways to, uh, to deal with these types of situations. So eScribe, the, the staff, our team here has been very hard at work over uh, the past uh, four or five weeks, uh, adjusting some of our, or optimizing our, uh, our delivery and operations team so that we can deal with things a, a lot quicker when it comes to adding new features or ramping up new clients, uh, because we know that uh, everybody is really trying to figure out how to continue as normally as possible, how to can still be able to work remotely, uh, without having too much face-to-face -face interaction. Obviously, everybody's um, practicing social distancing and, uh, and, and seems like everybody's doing a very good job for the most part. Uh, Brad, Brad and I were just discussing how working from home is a, kind of a refreshing change. Seems like everybody seems to be getting a little bit more work done because there's less time on the commute and less water cooler talk, that kind of stuff. Uh, we've also been working very hard to help municipalities and school boards, other public entities to successfully produce and manage public meetings and still maintain uh, a high degree of engagement for residents. So uh, what I typically do when I, when I host these, uh, these sessions now is uh, I turn off my, my webcam to conserve bandwidth. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll start sharing my screen. Uh, Paul uh, Mackin, who is our uh, vice president and also um, one of the co-founders, uh, he was not able to, to join us today. He was having some, some technical issues with uh, getting logged in. So he's asked me to, um, uh, to continue the, the presentation uh, in his absence. So uh, really, uh, really quickly going to share uh, a slide deck. I'll probably go through this kind of quickly uh, and talk a little bit about 
how um, our relationship with municipalities, Newfoundland and Labrador works. It's very similar, it would be very similar to um, our relationship with uh, uh, Association of Municipalities Ontario or AMO. AMO. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. High level discussion or just a few speaking points in terms of digital transformation. Uh, why start with meetings in terms of digital transformation or looking at uh, you know addressing areas for efficiency and strengthening governance and citizen engagement. Uh, what you can do for your digital transformation strategy. Then okay the the moment we've all been waiting for the demonstration of eScribe, which is where we'll spend the bulk of our time, and then we'll kind of summarize and get into a little bit of Q and A. So um, our partnership, uh, and that should say uh, M and L, not Emo. Uh, I was just borrowing some content from uh, another slide deck, but. Um, We've got tools available for uh, helping municipalities of any size, uh, you know, you know, hamlets and villages all the way up to major cities like St. John's, which uh, is an eScribe customer. So we've got tools available for municipalities of all sizes. Uh, and I wanted to spell any myths right away. Um, you know, anybody thinking, oh, well, we're too small to use something like that. And uh, I always counter with, well, hey, if you're small, um, then you probably need this more than, than larger municipalities because let's face it, smaller municipalities do all of the same things as the larger centers, but often with, you know, fewer staff, fewer resources, and probably smaller budgets. So the, uh, the opportunity to uh, optimize efficiencies is uh, probably more important. We're uh, committed to Canadian municipalities. Obviously, we have, uh, you know, we're, we're deeply rooted in the, in the Canadian market. We've got uh, well over half of the top 50 uh, largest cities in Canada as, as clients. Uh, and of course, again, we, we cater to municipalities of all sizes. But we really closely focus on and pay attention to uh, the legislative requirements across the country, whether it's um, you know, weighted voting for the regional districts or counties in uh, British Columbia that have weighted voting uh, for their um, for their voting members based on the population sizes in their wards, or in Ontario, if it's uh, something like maintaining a conflict of interest registry, which is a legislative requirement. Municipalities are required to log and maintain a log of the uh, declarations of conflict and publish those declarations on their website. So that's functionality that's built right into eScribe, as well as evolving legislation regarding accessibility. And what I mean by that is uh, we're constructing buildings and making them accessible with, um, you know, uh, ramps and lifts and, uh, you know, uh, the, the proper uh, fonts and, and raised lettering on, on labels and stuff. We also need to make our digital content, our websites, our PDFs. We need to make sure that that content is, is accessible by people that are using assistive screen readers or people who are hearing impaired, like closed captioning. So we pay attention to that stuff. Uh, as far as the benefits for, uh, for members, you're going to be able to participate in our, our, our webinars, our conferences, our workshops. Uh, there's a ton of online resources that will be available to you for best practices um, and thought leadership. And we have some uh, special pricing for smaller municipalities. So um, I would invite you to reach out to Paul and or myself to have conversations if you're interested in obtaining some pricing. So uh, digital transformation, uh, what is it and why? Digital transformation is essentially taking what you've done up till now, the old way of doing it. We've always done it this way. A lot of it is, you know, manual processes and, you know, using a lot of paper and print consumables. It's moving away for that. And I'm using this in the context of meetings and managing meetings. It's taking things from a manual and a paper-based process to a more automated, streamlined, efficient, technology-based process where now we're getting into, you know, being able to do things a lot quicker because we're, you know, not having to jump between many, as many applications as before. 
we're not having to do as much manual tasks and uh, we're eliminating paper where where it makes sense there's going to be some people who don't want to give up their paper paper's not the enemy so you can they can still have their paper but let's focusing on improving in other areas like raising efficiency and productivity um, making content consumption a lot easier more user friendly for for your residents so as people go to your website and are looking for agendas and minutes and video it's searchable it's easy to find stuff um, they can click a link on an agenda or a minutes document or sorry click an item in that in an, uh, an agenda or a minutes document and it will fast forward and jump to that exact spot in the video of, of the meeting. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier accessibility and transparency requirements, being able to make documents and content uh, more easily accessible, uh, one for people who are looking for things, but also for people who have um, either visual or audio disabilities. And of course, you know, paper reduction, and of course, print consumables, less toner, less toner cartridges, less plastic in our landfills, that also uh, adds up over time. And of course, uh, digital transformation is, is now even more uh, important, given that we're in a world now where we're, uh, where we're being forced to uh, social distance, work remotely, uh, but still stay engaged. And we've uh, pulled together some resources, uh, which I'll, I'll share, um, share the link a little bit later on here. But you can go to our, our website and uh, right on our, on our website, there's a, there'll be the first banner that pops up is our COVID-19 response, which I encourage you to check out. There's some blog articles, some videos, uh, some webinars in terms of what eScribe is doing to work with municipalities and school boards to help them successfully ramp up and being able to support remote working uh, arrangements, okay? Being able to put together your agendas, your agenda items, your minutes, do, um, you know, collaborative work and approvals without having to be face-to-face -face. and also virtual meetings where the, public's, the public can participate. So a little bit more on that later. Why start with meetings? Well, because they're an essential part of local government. And uh, especially during a crisis like the one we're, we're, um, uh, that, like we're in right now. Um, it's, they're obviously resource heavy. Um, you know, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, people and time and resources uh, to, um, to pull together a, a agendas and, uh, and meetings. So it's measurable. You can actually look at, well, how many meetings do we have a year and how many reports go into the agenda and how many agenda packages do we print out and how many pages are in the agenda so you can look at you know the amount of time it takes to pull everything together as well as follow up after tasks are assigned and how much print paper we're consuming and you can actually produce a return on investment calculation how much labor hours and how many labor dollars the municipality will save by adopting a, a meeting management platform and reducing a lot of those inefficiencies, okay? Not to mention that, hey, uh, meetings can be stressful, uh, particularly now, because you're, you're under crunch times, you're under deadlines, you gotta pull things together and do it quickly. And agenda days, or everybody says, well, they don't call it agenda day for nothing. They're, they're tr stressful and it's, and it's time consuming. I mean, I was having a conversation with a clerk of a, a, a moderately sized city uh, a couple weeks ago. And I said, well, uh, I, I guess I called her on, a, on agenda day and I said, well, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll let you go. I, well, look, it's, I, I can tell you're stressed. They don't call it agenda day for nothing. And she's like, agenda day, call it agenda week. So um, obviously there's, there's still a lot of municipalities out there that, um, you know, are, are dealing with a lot. Um, and, and meetings are also a good place to start because there's some easy efficiencies. A lot of the meeting related artifacts can be templated, meaning you don't have to start over or do the same thing or cut and paste all the time. You can create a template and make it really easy to complete. And paper uh, is becoming obsolete. I mean, I, I still like using paper. Uh, 
you know, maybe call me a little bit old school, uh, but I'm equally adept at using uh, a, a tablet uh, for meetings. In fact, of um, since I started at eScribe two years ago, I probably use uh, annotation tools for marking up digital documents. Actually, that's all I do. So when I get a PDF and I need to make my notes on it, uh, I'm not printing it out like I used to. I'm only using uh, digital annotation tools. So um, when it comes to uh, conducting a meeting in, in, in the, uh, the COVID area, and hopefully it won't always be like this, but the capability is there for, you know, the next crisis that comes up. So what, what you're seeing here on this graphic is how eScribe can support public meetings and keep the, the public engaged. So obviously on the left-hand side over here, I don't, there's my mouse, staff and administration, uh, elected officials. Uh, you know, you've got your staff and admin, they're pulling stuff together, okay? And working together with a meeting administrator like eScribe. So you can do it yourself, you can do the DIY approach, or you can leverage eScribe's uh, meeting facilitation services and we can help you mesh everything together. And then you've got the elected officials who are all going to be participating, probably have a, their, uh, their device in front of them, an app uh, on their device, whether it's a, an, an iPad or a laptop with uh, touchscreen capabilities like a Windows 10 device. Okay, eScribe is going to help everybody stay on the same page with the agenda, speaker queue management, request to speak, electronic voting, um, and just generally staying on the same page and the clerk or the board secretary is going to be capturing notes and capturing who moves the motion, who seconds it, and you'll see all that in the demonstration. And the extra layer would also be the, uh, the conference platform. And that's your going to be Zoom, like the application we're using today on this webinar, or it might be Microsoft Teams or GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar or WebEx or Adobe Connect or whatever tool you want to use. Um, most of those tools allow for public participation. So you can, with Zoom, this seems to be the best one, the most popular one. Members of the public could, uh, could join in and your, one of your meeting administrators can unmute a microphone when somebody wants to address, uh, address council. So really easy to manage. And then for uh, the public, so people who may, might not be uh, appearing as a delegate to speak in front of council, uh, they can watch the proceedings online, streaming directly from your website with our video uh, streaming services. So uh, in, during this time of COVID, it would be the view of like whatever is on Zoom. Okay, so that whoever is running the Zoom meeting plugs their laptop into our streaming service and that's what they're gonna see live. That's what's also gonna get recorded and that's the video that we would apply closed captioning feed to if you're going to enable that. Uh, we've also mm -hmm. recently in introduced, like just in the last couple of weeks, a new public comments module. So if uh, an individual wants to go onto your website, look at your, uh, your agenda, and they decide, oh, I want to make a comment on, on that item, they can enter the comment. You'll be able to vet the comment, okay, and make sure that it's not inappropriate or obscene, and then add that comment to that agenda item on the, on the agenda. So I'll show a little bit of an example of that. Uh, I don't have it, the, uh, that module set up on my, my demo system yet. Uh, again, we just introduced it. It's actually getting set up, uh, added, uh, our technical team is adding it this afternoon. Uh, so you'll have a chance to, uh, to see it in action if you attend one of our future uh, overview webinars, or if you go to our COVID response page, you can sign up for one of our upcoming webinars and um, see how that functionality works. So um, remote, uh, like the, the meeting, part of the meeting life cycle, which I'll focus on a little bit more in, in the next slide, I think it is. But um, when you're working remotely, You've got things that are happening before the meeting, things that are happening during the meeting, obviously remotely, and things that are happening after the meeting. So pre-meeting, you're getting all of your items submitted and approved. You're pulling the agenda together. You're getting it distributed to the elected officials and staff. Uh, usually, you know, a little bit before you publish it to the website. You're maybe setting up draft minutes and uh, looking at 
public comments and anybody who wants to, uh, who has requested uh, a to be a delegate in front of council. Uh, during the meeting, you're taking roll call, ensuring you have quorum, managing attendance throughout the meeting, and all of that, that functionality is built into eScribe. Then you've got your video conferencing, okay, so your Zoom uh, tool or your go-to meeting or Microsoft Teams or Skype, plus you could be webcasting that feed. Uh, after this COVID crisis passes, you obviously use um, cameras in the council chamber to um, provide that video feed. And as the meeting progresses, it's automatically applying timestamps or video tags to the agenda. So when somebody goes to your website and they're looking at the agenda or the minutes, eh, they click on an item and it jumps to that part in the video. We can manage requests to speak, uh, conduct voting electronically, capture the minutes live so that by the end of the meeting, your minutes are hmm, pretty much done. Just need to proofread and edit, but they're pretty much done at the end of the meeting. And of course, uh, electronic public participation. After the meeting, you're preparing your minutes. So again, the minutes are done. Your, your minutes are done at the end of the meeting because you've captured them live. Uh, everything's been sort of pre-populated using the agenda. The agenda forms the shell document for the minutes. And then you're just filling in the gaps. At the end of the meeting, it's more crossing the, the I's, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. And you can also use workflows for the final approval of that official minutes document. Publish those minutes, publish the video, capture all your action items and your tasks and run make, make sure they're assigned to the right individuals or departments and then track them as time goes on. Each individual that would receive the task, and I'll kind of speak to this a little bit more, um, but each individual that will receive a task comes in by email, they click a link, it logs them into eScribe and they can update the task uh, over time from assigned to in progress to complete. And of course, again, you can run reports to see who has what and when it's due and what the priority level is and what the deliverables are to help manage deadlines, ensure that things aren't creeping up on people and nothing is falling through the cracks. Okay, so in terms of what eScribe is, it's a meeting management system to address every component in the meeting life cycle. But there's two components that you need to have <clears throat> in order to make a meeting happen. One is <clears throat> the meeting profile itself. You can call it an agenda template on steroids with all the standing items on your agenda, plus all the procedural rules and everything that typically comes together to make a meeting happen. So the, the what, the when and the where. Then you have to have the who, who is going to participate. And that's based on the attendee profiles. And depending on the, uh, the user or the role of the individual, they might interact in the meeting a different way. Uh, and they would probably use eScribe or your website a different way, depending on their role. All of those can be, those permissions can be controlled from within eScribe to ensure that you've got good control over who can uh, participate in which way and uh, who can see the content. So obviously you want to have control over closed session content and you want to ensure that you, you know, people who are coming into the meeting to participate, that the elected officials, they're the ones who count as quorum. They're the ones who vote. Um, uh, the mayor, as, who's obviously the chair of the meeting, they, uh, they have a vote, but it might be only in the event of a tie. Maybe they vote every time, maybe the only event uh, vote in the event of a tie. So all highly configurable. When you bring all of those components together, you have a meeting in eScribe, which we support with a six step business process. So starting with the meeting logistics, just a fancy way of saying scheduling, making sure that you have all the details uh, pulled together so people know uh, that there's a meeting at this date, at this time, at this location, and these are the individuals that are going, and here's what's on the agenda. So being able to pull all of that together and make sure that everybody is on the same page. Uh, we, we can integrate into pretty much any email and calendar system out there to make sure that everybody knows it's in one place and you can send out those meeting invites straight from eScribe. Agenda management is the next component. And this is where now you're pulling together the agenda with all of the collaborative tools and resources that you need to make it happen very quickly and very efficiently. 
and we integrate with uh, with Microsoft Office. Every version from that's well currently supported, so 2010 to Office 365. So we would use your existing agenda item templates based in Word, and we would graph them into eScribe and make it so that you only have to go into eScribe to find the latest version of the template. It'll open up in Word, and then you just fill it out and complete it as you normally would. If late items come in, which you know often they do, we have a very convenient mechanism for handling late items so that you don't have to do like the olden days where it's uh, you've got all your Word documents and attachments ready to go, and then you use Adobe Acrobat to turn everything into a PDF, but then a late item comes in and it kind of forces you to start back at square one and do it all over again, which for most people, it's an average of a half hour worth of work. With eScribe, it's 30 seconds or not even. It's just, you know, adding that item as an addendum or merging it in to, uh, to, uh, to an existing agenda as a late item, but, you know, marking it as a late item. Then you've got your meeting management component, huge differentiator for us uh, in that you're actually using the software to conduct the meeting live. And not every uh, agenda or meeting management software vendor does this. Or, and, and if they do, they, they don't do a good as job as we do. Uh, and uh, I might be biased because I work for eScribe, but you know, we could probably put you in touch with some other municipalities who've used other tools and they can definitely speak to that. So you're using eScribe to, you know, support your meeting from roll call to adjournment. So starting with roll call, built-in roll call and quorum management based on your quorum rules. Okay, you can manage your attendance through a widget. So if somebody leaves a room, you mark them as absent. When they come back in, you mark them as in. Um, so you can capture your minutes, who moved a motion, who seconded a motion, what the vote result is. You can work with different vote modalities, whether it's simple majority or, or roll call vote, or maybe you're changing a bylaw and you need to change it from 50% plus one threshold to two thirds members present or two thirds members. Uh, we handle weighted voting, election style voting, runoff voting, and a number of other configurable options. You can go in and out of closed session securely uh, so that only individuals with closed session access can see it. And it won't even accidentally get published anywhere else because of how the system is set up. You can handle consent agendas uh, or consent items, one click to lift it if you need to, um, capture conflicts of interest and obviously publish those as well. So basically everything you need to run a meeting and by the end of it, have your minutes done. So. After the meeting, you go into a post-meeting editing mode where you're now simply dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And if you've captured video, you have the ability to adjust any of those timestamps. The timestamps were automatically captured throughout the meeting, but if you need to adjust any of them, very easy to do that. Now, uh, throughout the meeting, if you've captured action items or tasks or uh, post-meeting, you're now assigning tasks, you can capture those tasks associate them with the, an agenda item. So say, oh, we're city's approving or the town's approving purchase of um, a new fire truck, you know? Um, so then uh, uh, a task will go to finance to source three vendors or uh, initiate an RFP process or uh, execute a contract. So that can be assigned to an individual or a department and obviously tracked after the fact. And then we go into the publishing module you're, where you're able to um, publish in HTML or PDF format or both. Okay, HTML, much more of a friendly um, format for, for being accessible, uh, a little easier for people with uh, screen reading applications to navigate or use PDF. Uh, and of course, we can publish to uh, other um, records management systems like Laserfiche, FileHold. Uh, we've got a connector, that a generic connector for open text and a few others. So that's how the meeting comes together. Then you add your, your participants or your attendees, your administrators, and there's different levels of administrators. They'd be your, uh, you know, your, your clerks, your board secretaries, your uh, CAO executive assistants, people who would manage users and agendas and meetings. Uh, you can even break it down into where you'd have a, an, an administrator for one particular meeting type, 
you might have different meeting administrators and somebody who does counsel, but somebody who does, you know, the HR committee or the finance committee and so on and so forth. So you can break things down and sort of trim the uh, people's ability and what they can see. Participants, those are your elected officials, they would log into eScribe through a browser or through our uh, eScribe participant professional app, which is available for download on Windows 10 devices, so something like a Microsoft Surface, uh, or iPads, where they can view agendas, obtain announcements, look at resources, make markups and annotations on their agendas. They can vote electronically if you have that module enabled. They can self-declare conflict. They can request to speak. All of that's within uh, uh, the eScribe app. Uh, contributors are members of staff who would receive uh, tasks that would be assigned by the, uh, the elected officials. So, you know, uh, directors of finance or HR or public works or planning or whatever, but they would also be the net producers of content. So they're the ones who are going to be producing their staff reports and their agenda items and their supporting documents for the agenda. Of course, members of the public, last but not least, prob probably the most important people, because we all serve the public, um, they're going to be able to participate in meetings, either live by sitting in the gallery um, under normal circumstances, or they'll go online to look up agendas, look up minutes, do keyword searches, maybe submit a delegation request, maybe comment on an agenda item, or maybe just watch uh, a video and maybe just watch a section of the video that's important to them. Oh, there's a bylaw changing in my board, so I'm gonna find that in the agenda. Oh, it's item 9.1. I'll click that and watch the uh, five minute segment where that item was on the floor. So, demo time. Um, I'm just gonna quickly, got an area heater here in my office, so I'm just gonna turn that down. It's getting hot in here. Um, what you're going to see, we're going to just really do some high level uh, key points on eScribe uh, on our, our meeting management system, talk about some workflows and document approval and get into uh, web publishing and webcasting. So let me just go over to eScribe here. Now, I'm logged in as an administrator. And again, uh, there's role-based permissions. So depending on your role, you may see something different. This is the administrator view. Um, and as I go into some different screens here, I'll mention, you know, this is how you would see something if you were a participant or if you were a contributor. Right away, you'll notice colors and branding. So the eScribe logo can easily be changed to your city or your town coat of arms or your, your branding logo. The colors can be uh, changed to match your corporate color schemes, okay? Uh, the menu button, I call it a hamburger button because it looks like a hamburger. Uh, click on that and that will allow you to access very quickly different areas of the system. Meeting management is where you would set up and manage different meeting types. And eScribe is a site subscription, I should mention that, or a site license, meaning pretty much unlimited everything. Uh, one annual fee for the municipality, and it gives you the ability to set up unlimited users, unlimited meeting types, unlimited reports, or report templates, unlimited workflows, and the ability to conduct an unlimited number of meetings and store an unlimited volume of content, so your agendas, your minutes, and your video um, in eScribe. Okay, for one annual fee, which covers the cost of the hosting of the, uh, uh, of the platform uh, on our infrastructure, which by the way is uh, Microsoft Azure Canadian infrastructure, okay? So data sovereignty is not an issue. It will stay with it. Your data stays within Canadian borders, okay? Um, and uh, so unlimited everything. Attendee management is where you would set up your users and your attendee groups. So what group, you know, what group of people attend which meeting. So you can set all those up and configure, again, who votes, who counts as quorum, um, who can see closed session content, all that good stuff. And you can uh, set users up with what we call forms-based authentication so that all they have to do is go to, um, you know, stjohns.escribemeetings.com or whatever the name of the city is uh, and you enter a username and password. So it's like 
It's exactly like logging into Hotmail or Gmail. We also support uh, single sign-on capabilities with Active Directory Federated Services, ADFS, or Azure AD. Report Manager, which I'll come back to, is uh, our module for setting up agenda items or staff reports, uh, all the collaborative pieces and workflows. The Action Log is where you ma manage all your action items and tasks. Report Center is uh, our dashboarding tool for running your analytics on, on meetings, on attendance, on resolutions or motions, what passed, what, what was defeated, uh, what is being worked on. So you can have a forecast view and see all of the agenda items that are being worked on. And maybe you have like a rolling three month or four month schedule and helps you manage uh, where agenda items are supposed to fall and what meetings. Of course, you can run um, reports on conflicts of interest as well, see who had a conflict or voting history to see which council member voted which way, what their voting history is like. So lots of different reports. Other pretty self-explanatory, um, different uh, ways to configure eScribe and set up templates and shortcuts and branding, okay? So um, what you're seeing on this screen, uh, really quickly, documents. These are items in this particular screen that have been created, gone through an approval process, and are now waiting to be added to, um, added to an agenda. I'll come back to this and show you how that works. Agenda items, I call this a parking lot. It's a parking lot for agenda items, whether they're referred, maybe a, a member of staff or a member of council would refer an item, it goes here. For, um, for the admin staff to vet and decide where it's going to go, what agenda item, it, what agenda it's going to be added to. Or if you defer an item and you don't, uh, you know, put that item into another meeting right away, it gets parked here. On the right hand side are all of our meetings and this can be, um, filtered to show up in a number of different ways. You can have it show up, uh, if I just click here, you can see all the different meeting types. Obviously, this is our demo system and we've set up a number of, uh, you know, um, meeting types to match or um, mirror the agendas and the, the, the minutes for a number of different uh, clients that we've done demos for. So you can have an unlimited number of uh, meeting types here. Whether the meeting has been published or not, and a date range. So I'm just going to make this for this month. And you'll see that there's a ton of meetings in, in here right now. But after I uh, filter it down to what's just happening this month, we get a much easier to, uh, to a much easier view to, to look at. Okay, setting up meetings really easy. You'll notice there's some areas that if I hover over them like this little plus button, it says new. That's where we can schedule a new meeting. So when I click that, from a series of drop-down menus, I'm just selecting the meeting type, the uh, meeting group. There we go. Uh, the location, which is very quickly and easily going to populate the location uh, or the address bar on your um, on your agendas. Okay. Uh, if you have meetings at a different closed location, so sometimes. Um, council will leave chambers and they'll sequester within, you know, a side boardroom or something like that. You can, you can put that in there. You're going to really quickly select a, a start and end time. And this doesn't, the end time isn't going to shut eScribe off uh, at the prescribed end time. This is simply to block out time in everyone's calendars. Okay. If you want to uh, add a session, like maybe you go into uh, another meeting afterwards, like a second session, maybe you do a morning council meeting and then an afternoon session, you can do that. You can uh, pre-configure default submission deadlines and submission reminders, which always can be adjusted manually on the fly. And there's some uh, metadata here for if you want to um, enter in a meeting number or resolution numbers, you can add those here as well. Uh, you can set up, send out meeting notifications and you can be selective in terms of what roles with or what user roles would receive those invites. So they would automatically receive the calendar invite for this meeting. And you can set it up as a recurring meeting simply by se selecting the recurrence interval and the number of recurrences that you want to, uh, to publish.
So I've already set up a meeting here, the April 16th meeting. Okay. Uh, so uh, the screen that I'm on right now is on the, on the left-hand side, just a generic kind of standing agenda. All right. eScribe, our, our uh, implementation team would work with you to set up a couple of meeting types. So we'll take your existing agenda template and minutes template, and we'll, we'll set it up to, um, to match the order. The publishing view might be a little bit different, um, and, and there's some reasons behind that. One, because of, you know, if you're converting something to an HTML, uh, it's going to look different than a PDF. But also, when it comes to making documents accessible, we want to make sure that we're using the right fonts and making things look clean and crisp and structuring it so that each, um, each agenda item category and sub item are structured properly uh, as what we call headers. So every time somebody hits the, I guess, the tab button or an advance button, it jumps between headers instead of trying to have it read an entire document in a linear fashion. So it just makes documents more navigatable for people using accessibility software. Okay, so the, on the left-hand side are the agenda items. And if I click on any one item, it's going to pull up the agenda item details on the right-hand side. So you can see here, I'm on roll call you'll notice some little uh, cute little icons on the right hand side. If I hover over this one here, it's a pad and pen, it says minutes. And that's because if I scroll down to the bottom, in the minutes field, there's some pre-populated minutes. So this is text that you're going to have in your minutes every single time. The meeting was called to order at such and such a time. The mayor called the meeting to order at 7 p.m. And this is a text editable field with rich text editing features. So you can control um, font, bold, italicize, underline, strike through, your margins, your indents, bullets and numbering and all that great stuff. Okay, you'll notice the details are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the agenda item title, in this case, roll call. You can enter your description, sponsor, what department they're from. Um, if, the, you, if there was a conflict declared on any particular item, it would show up here. If you've got attachments or supporting documents, they're there. If you were building this agenda and you wanted to um, say that we're awaiting attachments or there was changes required, you could click off one of these check boxes and before the clerk goes to publish it, this little uh, alert symbol over here on the left hand uh, column, that would be lit up and they'd be able to view that and see what items have content that's still waiting. So if we go down to the adoption of the agenda or the adoption of the minutes from the previous meeting, you'll notice there's gavels uh, on those as well as in closed session and the adjournment. And that's because there's pre-populated motions. Uh, in this case, that the agenda be adopted by all council, or there'd be something similar that the minutes of the previous meeting be adopted or that, um, you know, that council go into closed session or that the meeting be adjourn. So those are going to be pre-populated so you don't have to pop, you know type them in every single time. Creating ag uh, agenda items is super easy and there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm going to go down to item number eight, okay category eight new business and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to produce agenda items. One is oh, both are easy, one is slightly manual but it's a very quick and easy way to add uh, an item to the agenda. I'm going to go over here to this button that says new, just hover over it and a menu pops up. I'm going to click on item and it's going to now allow me to fill in the details uh, field by field. So okay. And I type today. <laughs> okay, so I've got a uh, agenda item title and a description. Now I'm going to save and edit that that item. Okay, you'll see down here. There's the title, and there's the description. And maybe we're going to say, okay, we've got a sponsor on this, and it can be checked against the um, the address book. We'll say we're from planning department 
and or let's see maybe you're part of the engineering department and maybe there's this uh you know the uh the water um the the water treatment facility so maybe you have a uh, a separate subdivision under under a department. Um, we can add files very easily. Uh, just browse and add, and you can add in any particular. You can add in pretty much any format. You do not have to convert to PDF. You can add uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Google Docs, image files, pretty much any kind of format out there. So you just select your file and upload it. If you have a records management system, like say Laserfiche, and you want to pull um, pull some content out of Laserfiche, you'd click on the Laserfiche button. It would prompt you to uh, log in. So you'd have to have a you know login and password for the Laserfiche repository. And then you're going to, if if you use Laserfiche, then this probably looks familiar to you. You're going to go in and uh, find the document you want, click the little download button, and it downloads, attaches it to the uh, agenda item as a supporting document. So I attached a document from my local drive, or I could do it from a network drive as well, and I've pulled one out of the laser fiche repository, which, I mean, is a, it's an agenda package from a previous meeting, but just for demonstrating demonstration purposes, just showed you how that works. Um, we'll create a, a vote on this as well. So I'll go back down to that new button, click on vote, and we'll make it a motion. We'll say that council approve the recommendation in the attached reports. And this is uh, a recorded vote. So you can set your vote type as a default. You can make it just a simple majority vote or a recorded vote, which is a roll call. Make sure the details show up in the minutes or if you're a weighted vote or, ooh, that maybe we're changing a bylaw. So we'd have to make it two thirds, two thirds threshold. So we'll save that and that gets saved as a vote on that item. If you wanted to, um, if you knew that uh, there was going to be uh, an action item or a task uh, assigned after this, um, maybe would assign it to, um, we'd assign it to an individual to go and get three quotes after this meeting. And we can leave some of these details blank because, um, you know, if the if the motion is defeated, then maybe the task is not going to get assigned. But you can always update those later. You can create a task before, during, or after a meeting. So just to recap, uh, this was a very quick and easy way, slightly manual, but still a very quick and easy way to create an agenda item. Give it a title, a description, a sponsor, uh, indicate what department that the uh, that it's coming from add some attachments, both from a local drive or a network drive and laser fiche, and add a vote and an action item. So really quick and easy. Uh, again, slightly manual, but quick and easy. Another way to add an agenda item, and this is where we get into the collaboration and workflow uh, functionality. I'm going to go into report manager, which is our, our module for uh, managing and submitting agenda items. And this would be the view that I might see uh, if I'm logged into logging into eScribe as a, um, uh, a contributor, somebody in the contributor role. So uh, yeah, so th I've had this filtered for uh, just agenda items for city council uh, just for this month. It makes it really easy to find. You'll notice there's a couple of uh, co different colors on the deadlines, red means it's late. So they would automatically uh, go into an, what's called an exception uh, workflow where it would probably just go straight to the CAO, usually because you don't need it the, to, just for the sake of time, you want it to go to the final approver rather than through multiple stages. And usually the CAO would know there's a late item coming anyway. An item that is in uh, yellow or orange is an item that is falling in between a submission reminder and the actual submission deadline. So it means, hey, you better get on it. Um, creating an item, really simply, you can either upload a document, so you click the upload button, and then you would simply browse for the 
uh, the, uh, the document you're looking for and attach it. Or the better way to do it so that you're using the right templates with uh, the proper features set up, you'd click on the new button and from a series of drop downs, uh, let me see here, you would just select uh, the content type, give it a name, um, And if it's a closed session item, okay, you click on the closed session box, and then you can have these set up as templates. So whatever the reason that item, uh, the, the justification for that closed session item that you want to show up in the description on the open agenda, you can select, um, you can select those, those uh, reasons and it will auto populate that into the agenda. So I'm not gonna make it a closed session item, uh, I'm not going to focus too much on how we handle closed session agendas, but then you'd select what uh, meeting type it's for. You can leave the, the date as TBD. If you're not sure where it's going to fall, you can always change that later. And then you're going to, or you can change, you know, if you know the date that it's for, you select that date. And depending on what meeting type I select, it's obviously going to give me different options in the, in the uh, drop downs that follow. And we'll say we're from the executive department. We can assign it a, a report number. And the report numbers can be configured to match your uh, numbering sequence or your numbering logic. Give it a sponsor. And again, you have the ability to um, say whether or not you're waiting attachments. If you want to upload files or attach uh, additional supporting document, you can do that here as well. Upload it. And then you just create the uh, create the document. So what's going to happen now is I hit the create button. It's going to uh, open up Word. Uh, and because I'm working from home, I'm not behind the, not in the office, not in the domain. It's prompting me to log in. I'm pretty good at that now. Hopefully I didn't fat finger it. Now, it's loading up the template, and you'll notice uh, right away that my name pops up in the top right-hand corner. That means I'm logged into this document, and any permissions that I have related to this document, I'm now able to use those permissions. Uh, so you can use the, uh, some of the features that are built into Word to restrict the editing. So if you want to lock this down as a template and only allow people to enter content into certain areas or certain fields so that they can't change format, formatting, fonts, spacing, coloring, logos, margins, or break any of the accessibility features you build into the document, you can do that. So you can either password protect it or assign permissions by named individuals. So maybe only the people in finance, there's a handful of people in finance that could fill out the field here for financial implications. Okay, but again, it's Word, so you can use the power of Word to structure this document pretty much any way you want. Uh, obviously, you'd have your town logo or your city logo here, not the East Drive logo. And then the rest of it is just simply uh, filling out these fields. Okay, if you want to, to do that. And you'll notice some of them, there's a title field here and a recommendation field. And maybe I could have set this background field up as well. So title, eScribe will read that field and populate the title of the agenda item in the agenda. It'll read the recommendation and populate the recommendation or the vote that's going to be uh, the wording of the vote. Okay, uh, background might populate the description field. So all of that is built in. So I will... Give this a uh, quick name and the recommendation will be okay uh, and then once you're done you uh, close the document last thing i'll mention before i do though um, you could have multiple names show up. You'd have, you know, Blair, Paul, Brad, and that means all three of us would be logged into this document and we could be editing it at the same time without overwriting everybody's changes. It's called parallel editing. 
And so if you're up against a deadline and you need a bunch of people to contribute content to a staff report or whatever it is you're working on, uh, you can all work on it at the same time instead of having to wait till, you know, user one is done with it, then it goes to user two, and then it goes to user three, and then maybe back to user one. Uh, very easy and convenient. Now that that document is complete, it shows up here in my uh, repository of draft documents. I can um, now manage the permissions. So I can manage who, who can do what on that document. I can bring up my version history. I've got version control and I can revert back to uh, previous versions if need be. I can send it out as a link, which is really helpful. If I go into, um, into my email and I uh, bring up an email here and want to type in, say, the name James, I get four suggestions pop up and two of them are coworkers. If I attach a document and I send it to the wrong James, they're going to um, they're going to they're going to get the attachment, and I didn't mean for it to go to them. But if you oops, if you want to use a link instead, you can email the link. So the person who opens this email has to have credentials. They have to be able to log into this document. If they don't, then they don't get access to it. So layer security plus you're not clogging up your email server with a bunch of attachments, nor are, do you have a bunch of versions of a document with different file names, which can kind of get confusing. You can also set up alerts, so you can be notified uh, when anybody changes or edits a document, and you can receive those alerts on an immediate basis or with a daily report or a weekly report. We can send this out now, once the document is done, for approval and we'd use a, uh, an electronic workflow, electronic workflow process, okay? We'll include a signature page at the end to um, just notify, just list all the people who have approved the document and make sure all the details are there. So we've got our cover page, our uh, attachments, the financial statements, and then um, we would simply choose the workflow that we would want uh, to, um, to select. So um, say you had a, a two-stage approval, okay? You'll notice, or it could be as many stages as you, as you want, one stage, two stages, three stages. So if I look at Paul's two-stage approval here, there's Paul and there's Chris, and both have admin assistants who can route to other individuals for approval if need be. They can delegate that approval. And they also have a number of delegates people who can do a delegated approval. So if Paul's out of the, Paul's the fire chief or Paul's the police chief and he's always in his squad car or the, the you know, the field vehicle, never at his desk. So uh, unless he has the eScribe um, approval app, which is uh, available for iPhones and Android devices, he might just have one of his staff approve on his behalf. Okay, and you'd be able to do that by typing in, you know, Blair approving on behalf. Um, you can add approval steps either before you launch the uh, workflow or while it's in flight. You just would click it and select the individual that you would want to approve it. Very handy. Say um, the first approver looks at the document and they think, my goodness, there's a dollar amount in here that I think we should get finance to look at, or maybe it needs to go to the treasurer, or maybe we need to get an opinion from uh, the, the, the city attorney. You can add that on the fly and it would go to that person. And once they look it over and they approve it, it would move to the next person in the process. I'm just going to do uh, an immediate approval um, because I, you know, just for the sake of time and because I don't have multiple approvals, uh, people who can approve the document in front of me, I would just uh, click start the workflow. Somebody with admin access can always approve, um, you know, and they would be able to say, for instance, if, and if somebody in the approval process is on vacation, they're not in the office, and, um, you know, uh, Blair would call up Brad. Hey, Brad, can you approve this document for me? Paul's not available. And Brad would say, yes, Paul spoke to me before he left and I knew this was coming. So I'll, I'll approve it on his behalf. Okay. So that document has now been uh, approved. I can look at it at the, uh, the history of it here and see that it was approved with, you know, who approved it. And there's a, a timestamp 
on the approval as well. And if I go over to my email, you'll see over here, if I go in, there's the, those are the emails that I would have received. So here's the, uh, the email that the author would receive saying your workflow is initiated. And here's the email that they would receive once the item was fully approved. Um, the approvers would receive a, a similar email like this and they would click the link. It would log them into eScribe and they'd be able to view and, appro and uh, approve the document. So uh, I'll go back into the portal now and we'll see that that COVID um, item that we just created shows up here in the documents. If I click uh, on the, uh, the menu, I'm going to hit create agenda item. And it's already going to have some of the fields pre-populated, like the title. And so there's the title, which you pulled out of uh, the Word document. And there's the recommendation that council send delegates to the conference in October, which is what I entered into the Word document. So eScribe reads those, those fields, extracts the content, and populates the fields within the eScribe agenda. All I need to do now, because it knows it's for the city council meeting on the 16th, or if I needed to move it to another date, I could. But all I need to do is select the category that I want to slot it under. And there's, you'll notice, there is the other item that we just previously created. Okay, then I hit save. And yes, I want to add that item. And it just takes a moment to pull it all together and drop it into the agenda. I'll go back to my agenda. I'll refresh the page and now that item shows up as eight, item 8.2 and I'll just click on it and again I have the ability to you know edit some details here maybe I want to enter in a description uh, maybe I want to make sure that I have you know, maybe it's instead of a resolution it's a motion maybe I want to change the vote type or change the wording on the vote okay I'll just save that and now it's ready to go now, let's say um, we're just about ready to publish the agenda or at least distribute it out to the, um, to the elected officials. But before I do that, maybe I want to change the order of some of the items in the agenda. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe council has something to do, uh, or, you know, they have another event to get to. Maybe it's a ribbon cutting or something uh, or opening of a new hospital. So they want to get through new business before anything else. So I'm just going to take new business, the whole category, oops, and I'll move it up to category three. And maybe I'll just move this item. It's more important. I'll move it before that. And uh, maybe I'll take this zoning and planning and I'll break it out or I'll nest it into another. No, I'll leave it. I'll leave it in under that category. But you can move stuff around really easy um, uh, on the fly and then just click reorder, save the order that it's in. And now we can prepare and, and publish the, the agenda. Very easy. So I'll go into documents. I'll click on prepare. And it brings me into a screen where now I can convert my agendas or my minutes document. You see those two tabs up here. I can now click on full and hit prepare. And this is going to convert my agendas or my minutes into HTML format and PDF format. And whichever one I want to publish, it will publish to uh, wherever I point it to. Okay. So while that's coming up, I'll show you a couple of things. I'm going to go to my mock-up publishing page. Okay. And there's a number of different options in terms of how your public publishing pages can look. You can look at it in a upcoming view. Okay, so here's our upcoming meetings. And obviously you can change the colors and the fonts to match your website. But this whole section here that I'm scrolling up and down on, that's what's called an iframe. Okay, eScribe will provide you with the iframe HTML code that you will drop into your website. Uh, sort of like what St. John's has on their website. Okay, so they've got, it's their website. You'll see stjohns.ca slash council meetings. And what you're seeing here is a frame that's uh, hosted by eScribe. So you could look at it. They've got a calendar view, oh, calendar view, and a list view. Okay. Okay. If I click on a date, then all the the all the uh, PDFs, HTMLs, all the agendas, minutes, and video show up there, or in any other supporting documents. 
Okay, I can look at, again, calendar view, a list view for upcoming meetings. And if you're in Ontario or you just want to be able to publish your conflicts, that is uh, built right in. That's easy to do. Now, uh, our agendas are prepared. You can put it through the workflow for approval. That's very easy to do. But I'm simply going to now publish to a couple of different areas. One is going to be to the elected officials so that they can access their uh, agendas uh, through their portal. And you're pro everybody's probably looking at the clock at this time. So we'll, we'll be wrapped up in about, uh, uh, I would say, five, six, maybe seven minutes. And then um, we can take some questions if, uh, if you'd like. So I've published it to the portal. Maybe I'll also publish the PDF as well. And then I'll publish to the internet. So I'll go to this tab here and I'll publish to the internet. I can also publish this agenda to Laserfish if I want. So really quickly, I'll go back here and you'll notice that there's the April 14th meeting. There's a couple of meetings on the 15th and there's a meeting on the 27th. So I'm gonna add a meeting for the 16th. Just click on this button, hit publish, and then I'll close that. I'll refresh this page and it's gonna show a box for the April 16th meeting with, uh, and it won't have any, um, there it is, there's the 16th. Now there's no agendas or any artifacts published yet, but we will do that in just a second. You'll notice there's a link for delegation request, which somebody, a member of the public could click on, fill out their information and submit it to the clerk so they could be vetted and maybe added to the speaker comment or the speaker form. I'm now gonna publish the agenda in HTML and PDF. Okay, and you can be selective in terms of what supporting documents get published uh, to the agenda. Um, uh, one example where you might not want to publish something, there was a, a municipality that received a 153 pieces of correspondence on, for the public forum on uh, new cannabis bylaws. The clerk wanted to ensure that all the elected officials saw it, but just because it seemed like there was a, a, a wide variety of opinions uh, all across the spectrum, they thought, mm, let's make this a smooth meeting and, and just leave that out of the public agenda. If anybody wanted to see it, of course, they could submit a records request. Okay, so we've published uh, the PDF and HTML agendas for the 16th, okay? And now we're ready to run the meeting. So I'm gonna go into meeting mode where I'm gonna conduct the meeting. And before I do that, I'm gonna go into, there we go, my eScribe participant app. So a few things I'll mention here. This is the view that the council members would see, your elected officials, any announcements coming up. Expenses are due on Friday, get your receipts in. Uh, the mayor is attending the ribbon cutting ceremony at uh, the new hospital. Please, may, please attend if you can. So announcements, um, resources, at a glance resources that all your elected officials might want to have access to, like Robert's Rules uh, Handbook or Pocket Guide, their um, purchasing bylaws or, um, you know, uh, land transfer bylaws or whatever it is, really quick, easy to, to get access to. On the uh, right-hand side, meetings that you can view in a number of different formats, either by, you know, if you sit on council plus some committees, you can view it this way where all your different meeting types are. And I can use my, my mouse or my finger to uh, scroll around and back and forth on the, on the screen. Um, I can look at things uh, just in terms of, you know, meetings that are happening upcoming or what's today or all. So I can filter by it in a number of different ways. Some of the colors you're seeing here, orange just means that there's an agenda published and I've, I've looked at it, I've marked it up. Gray means it hasn't been published yet, and green means it's published and has not been touched yet. So I'm going to refresh the screen really quickly. You'll notice that the April 16th meeting is gray, and now it turns green, and that's because we just published it. I'll go into the, uh, into the meeting. Actually click on it there, and it just takes a second to, uh, to load up. There we go. And uh, now, as an elected official, I can navigate through the agenda. You'll notice there's uh, item three, new business, which was item eight previously. But there's, uh, you can treat what's on the left-hand side as sort of a table of contents. You can 
move the windows around to adjust your real estate. Uh, look at, you can pull up a full PDF version of the agenda or just navigate between items. So if I click on this particular item, you'll see that uh, there's the title, there are the uh, attachments, there's the report that we created, there's uh, another attachment. This is a, a really helpful view because you can have multiple attachments open at the same time. So it's kind of like having a bunch of documents out on the desk in front of you. Very easy to navigate through back and forth. Um, I'll make this full screen so it's a little easier to consume this content. And I can bring up my annotation features where, um, you know, I can, uh, oops, there we go. <laughs> I can circle or use freehand text, um, draw, highlight, underline, strike through, and use a, uh, a sticky note here as well. Maybe, um, Try it again. Here we go. And uh, these comments and markups and annotations would stay private for each voting member, each uh, each user. So uh, nobody else are going to uh, see it. So it stays private. And then um, you know if you want to. There we go back here. If you had a, say, a, a conflict on this particular item, uh, a member, a voting member could declare a conflict. Um, let's say, family member involved in the committee. So I just would submit that and it's going to register a conflict on that particular item. You'll see a little checkbox there. And there's a conflict here. I'm logged in as Andrew Smith. So you'd see here, Andrew has a conflict. I can click on it and it would bring up the, the details of that conflict. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's get the meeting started here. So I'll just park it on the call to order. I'll go back over to the eScribe screen. And oh, my encoder is locked. So sorry guys, just really quickly, I'm gonna unlock my encoder. Hopefully somebody else isn't using it right now, but I'll go into my video manager screen here. I think I'm on encoder two and it's locked. So I'm gonna unlock it. And this is just because it's locked because if you were running uh, two meetings at the same time, you'd wanna make sure that somebody couldn't hijack your encoder um, and steal the feed. If you wanted to run two meetings at the same time, uh, you could do that. You would just need a second encoder. So now we're, uh, our encoder's unlocked. Okay, we've got a splash screen up there. And simply turn on your uh, stream and your recording with the click of a button. It's recording, it's streaming, there's a live feed. If I wanted to throw up a splash screen because the meeting is about to start or we're in closed session, I could do that. And then we're ready to go. So I will click on roll call, which takes attendance. I mark everybody in save it, and then I conduct the meeting. So um, start with roll call. The meeting uh, was called to order at whatever time. And maybe we need to edit that. Maybe we started a few minutes late. And then we move on to the adoption of the agenda. And meetings happen pretty quickly. So you're going to have somebody move the motion, somebody second the motion, and it's going to carry. And then you move on to the next item. And it's the same thing. Moved by, seconded by, carried um, and maybe there was some minutes on it. Maybe, you know, Smith had a question on item da da da. And then you just keep going. Um, if you have conflict of interest as a, as a dedicated item on the agenda where people would declare their conflicts uh, all at once, you could capture that here with drop downs on whichever agenda item uh, it may be, or you could do it on the fly as well. So if we come down to item three, one, um, maybe we're ready to open that to a vote. And before I do that, uh, I'm going to put up my graphical public display. So this would be a screen that would show up on your public display in your council chamber. You may al might also want to set it up as a, a camera view or a video view uh, for, on your camera switching device if you use such, uh, such a component. 
So there's some discussion, then somebody move, makes a motion, somebody seconds it. And there's a couple of different ways to capture the vote. If you do a manual roll call, you would just simply click, uh, the clerk would call the roll and check out, uh, check each box for each individual. You notice that Andrew Smith, uh, who uh, declared a conflict, there, there's a strike through on the name and there's no check boxes to check off. And then we would capture those votes like that. Then the result would pop up and it would, uh, oops, didn't do it there. I'll clear this and I'll show a different way to do it. So if we're going to now uh, open the vote to, as an electronic voting, we'll do that. And if you wanted to add a secondary uh, motion or an amended motion, you could do that on the fly as well. But we're now going to uh, do a couple things here. I'll go over to my um, eScribe app, say I left the room, I came back in. I left the room to get a file. Now I come back in and I'm not sure where we're at. So I can click this little ribbon. It's gonna advance to the item that uh, is currently on the floor, right? There, click it, there we go. So I'm on item 3.1. And now we're going to open to voting. So I click open to voting and the vote screen uh, pops up on my, uh, on my tablet. Uh, I can't vote on this because I am, um, I already declared a conflict, but the vote is, uh, the vote screen is showing up here as a, uh, a motion. And then if we had everybody voting, I'll just uh, maybe there's some people that don't have an app, so you'd vote on their behalf. Close the vote, tallies the result, and it displays the vote in a graphical display on your, uh, on your public display. So if we were to do another, another vote where I can vote, so I'll do this one really quickly. So I'll go down here. And maybe there's some, some discussion on this item. So I'm gonna activate the speaker's queue, and maybe uh, we're on this item and I want to uh, speak on that. So I'd enter the speaker queue and I have a question and I'll request that. Go over back to eScribe and it's going to uh, add my name or add Andrew to, to this. I click on Andrew and I'm going to start the speaker queue. Okay. On the public display, it's going to list all the people who are in the speaker queue. So it'd be Blair, Andrew, and then Blair and Paul, and it would have a countdown. So this would be on your public display. And you can, you know, use presets or control the timer. Uh, and then when the uh, speaker session is over, you deactivate the speaker queue, and then maybe you'd uh, open to vote. So the vote screen pops up here, and I can submit my vote. And you'll see the vote automatically comes in. The clerk will be able to see all the votes as they come in, and once they're all collected, and maybe uh, the clerk uh, she or he has to, you know, capture a few manually. Once that's done, the vote result comes in. Okay. Uh, and much the same way that you would, um, you know, uh, publish the, now we'll conclude the meeting, and much in the same way that you would publish the agenda, we'll just mark everybody out here, um, much in the same way that you would publish the agenda, you're going to do the same thing for the minutes. You, after the meeting, you're going into a post-meeting editing mode, where now you can adjust the minutes, make sure you captured all the movers, the seconders, and if you need to adjust any of the timestamps on any of these items, you can do that. So if I click on item 3.1, the timestamp uh, started at 1 minute and 23 seconds, it ended, ended at 3.45. So I could adjust those if need be, and then of course publish these to my, my public site. If I um, wanted to just really quickly show you uh, you know, uh, public comments. This is where uh, somebody could go to an agenda, click an item where there's a, where they want to leave a comment and fill out their comments with their, you know, their, their email address. The clerk could vet those comments and those would get added. So here's Blair. He added a comment on the closure of public parks and his comment was the city should also close the recreational facility. So that's really easy to manage. If you'd like to see it in action, you can go over to the St. John's website uh, and just click on one of their meetings. Their video shows up uh, here on the on the right hand side with uh, if you want to turn on the closed captioning subtitles, very easy to do that. And then you could just go into um, into the meeting. It jumps to the timestamps, whatever they're they're um, uh, adjusted to. 
and run the meeting. So you see the closed captioning there. I think this one might have uh, a vote on it. So they'll uh, go into uh, a vote here in a second. It will, will show up uh, their, their vote screen. The, so it's gonna show the, the motion or the resolution that's being voted on. And uh, everybody votes from their iPad or their uh, Windows 10 device. And then the, uh, the votes show up within like however long it takes them to vote. Usually it's about four or five seconds. They usually vote pretty quickly, but I think uh, somebody was absent from this one. So they um, had to reflect that. So there's the vote results. It's in the shape of their, their council chamber uh, table or their dais. So everything is captured there. Um, so now we've got a, a few minutes left. Uh, happy to take a few questions. Uh, if we don't get, get to all of them, I'm happy to, uh, you know, get your phone calls or, or emails and, uh, and address any questions you might have that way. Uh, Brad, back to you. Thank you, uh, Blair. Really appreciate it. Um, folks, uh, thanks for uh, sticking with us. Um, we, uh, I'm just trying to get the, my camera working here now. My apologies. See you, Brad. You there? Well, um, so thanks, uh, Blair, very much. Great, uh, great demonstration. Um, I can honestly say I've used eScribe when I was the uh, board clerk at uh, Eastern Regional Service Board. Uh, it was a, a very productive uh, system. Um, it's uh, it may look a little complex based on uh, what we see here today because it's a new screen. It's new to us. However, trust me, when you get used to it, it's very, very productive. Um, and it, it certainly saved me a lot of time running the, uh, the board of directors uh, meetings at, at the service board. And I know, of course, with St. John's and other municipalities, they've had great success. It also checks off that mark of uh, being able to link with uh, public, uh, public video so that, uh, that our residents can actually um, uh, take in these council meetings, which we know with COVID for the next number of months will, uh, will certainly be a challenge. So Blair, thank you very much. Uh, folks, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I know it went a little bit longer than we anticipated, but I think it was certainly worth it. Um, there will be a survey emailed to you uh, shortly. I would ask that you fill that out. It'll literally take one minute. Um, be sure to check our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram moving forward uh, and, uh, and sign up for our newsletter on our website at municipalnl.ca to get future notices on webinars and training opportunities that we're putting forward. Um, thanks again, Blair. Our thanks to Paul and the eScribe team. Uh, folks, have a great day. Be safe out there, and we'll, uh, we'll see you all soon. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great long weekend.